Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Pama. Please sit down. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. But before I start my uh, singing, I would like to recognize the people who made these things possible. This uh, is Benjamin Salbosa, Chairman of the Board, University of Cordillera. Nene S. Bowman, Member of Board of Trustees. Linda Estrada, Member Board of Trustees. Dr. Rick Pama, President. Member of the Executive Council. My good friend, uh, Ma'am Nancy, who is always supporting me in TI. The graduates and the parents, and of course, my uh, commander in chief. If not, I cannot go home today. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. So, when I was asked to del deliver the uh, commencement uh, message to all of you, nagiisip ako paano ko kaya i connect ang Texas Instrument story with the graduation. So I was thinking, you know, over the past year, people were asking me, why Baguio? Why the Philippines? And a lot of people were, asked, were, were I mean, looking at you, this is not the place to put a high-tech company in, in Baguio. There's no infrastructure, right? But one thing is different. And I will tell you that story. It's because of you. So I decided that the Philippine or the Texas Instrument Philippine experience, I will match it with the story of the great Filipino workers. Okay, so I, I have uh, several slides. Because at TI kasi hindi po hindi walang slide eh, di ba? It makes you more comfortable, and it really gives you the right story. So I'll make it as short as possible, but as compelling, such that by the time you get out of this room, there's only one company that you would like to apply. Okay, I will not mention it. You make that decision. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Before, I was told by my management, okay, you can use TI, but make sure you flash what Texas Instrument is all about. So as, a, as an employee, I want to make sure that you understand what te Texas Instruments is. So Texas Instrument is one of the leading semiconductor company in the world. I think we're number three when it comes to revenue. So our revenue, last 2012 is about 14 billion dollars and mind you ladies and gentlemen 40 percent of that revenue is passing through our country so we are important so texas instruments has four businesses and some of you in the electronics uh, courses would understand what analog is all about it's anything that power, that, that drive, anything that you plug in or you put your battery. So it touches every appliances you have in your house, in your cars, and everything. So you cannot escape TI. The second one is what we call embedded processing. That is the one that drives your cell phones. The one that, that makes your car more safety safely to drive. Then we have wireless. Wireless something that connects you wherever you go, find you wherever you are. And the rest is about 21%. That comprise about $14 billion of our revenue. Next slide, please. Business. It's a very large opportunity for TI. The total available market is about 42 billion, 
and like to take the competition and basically corner the market. TI is quite uh, shrewd when it comes to competition. We would like to be number one, and we only hire graduates from the number one university. You know the reason why, right? So now let me tell you the story of Texas Instrument Philippines. Why in Baguio? So let me start with our operations in Baguio. Next slide, please. Foundation is extremely important. That's why in Texas Instruments, we have a saying. Attitude is all about values. And we pay for skills. Since you guys are the best when it comes to SAP, that's the reason why we're here. So, next slide. What is the foundation? Well, Texas Instruments started it's groundbreaking in 1977. I was hired in 1979. I look young like you, so I was hired maybe when I was 14 years old. I've been working in TI for the last 34 years. And you can see our building. It was a simple one. So it's a, it's a building in the middle of nowhere. But Texas Instruments believe that this is the start of a good future. Next slide. So we started our operations with 585 employees. We did some good things. Unfortunately, during that time, there was an economic downturn. So the objective of TI was to put all its microprocessor products in the Philippines. Unfortunately, because of the downturn, there was no product for us to build. So we are the cuts all. Whatever we can build, we build. We get the crumbs. Of course, when you get the crumbs, you don't have a good process. That's why over the years, even if we have some few wins, people were asking, why did we put that factory in Baguio? You know, I think it's wrong. But the 585 employees say, no. We will make sure that this factory, one of these days, will be benchmarked. We have 23 factories all over the world. Factories in Malaysia, Taiwan, Portugal, Japan, uh, US, UK, and so on. And we are the youngest, and we have the lowest performing uh, factory because of the products that we have. So as a young engineer, I told English. Now I, I start learning after 34 years. So I told myself, all of you in those factories around the world will one day queue up and visit our factory to benchmark what we're doing. So in English, I told them, bullet day, I will giant you. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Sa Tagalog. Okay, so that was the story. Next slide, please. So we were being, in 1985, Somebody decided, our management in TI decided, well, let's give them a chance. Let's bring a good money. In 1984 to 85, we made some wins. In 1986, that very good managing director died in a plane crash. Again, it's a disaster. The question of the viability of the organization is again put to questions. And fortunately, we have some backers and say, we'll not give up. Let's give them another chance. 
So they give another good managing director, Solidas. But in 1986, another disaster struck. People power revolution. So if you have a company that is having disasters after disasters, what will you do? But believe me, those 585 employees never say die. And after that, we made some wins. Continuous improvement. We focus on TPM. We focus on 5S. We did benchmark. Our philosophy is copy. Copy shamelessly. You know, don't be shameful. Get the best practice, improve from it. And that's what I would like to encourage you. Don't practice what we call NIH, not invented here. You will start from zero. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just copy and improve from it. And that's what we did. We're making improvements. Our management were convinced this is the place. We started investing. And look what happened. July 16, 1990, a lot of you maybe were not born yet. What happened? This place in Baguio was turned into like a dark ages. No power, no water, no nothing. And some don't say here in Dallas, Texas says, this is the end of it. We will never put this factory back again. Because the products that we build is what we call sole source. We only produce this product in Baguio. Those products, we call it uh, the anti the safety uh, that control airbags that goes to Mercedes-Benz. We're the only supplier. Any day that you shut down a factory like that, you are charged $1 million. The first thing that our management say, it will take six months before this factory can be back again. And TI will be kaput by that time. But you know what the people here said? No, sir. In 15 days, we'll be back. Nobody believed us. You cannot do that. There's no water. You know what we did? We bought all the uh, fire hoses in Manila. Every fire hoses in Manila and connect our water from TI five kilometers away. And in two days, we have water. The problem was, if there was a fire in Manila, the whole of Manila will be burned. There's no fire hoses. In 15 days, we were shipping units. And the people cannot just believe it. So one of our major critique in, in, in the US said, why do you guys keep coming back? You're dead and you're still back again. Well, we have great Filipino workers. OK, so everybody was saying, this is a miracle mountain. Not even a people revolution, not a plane crash, or an earthquake can stop these people from shipping units. 1991, what happened? Mount Pinatubo erupted. We got a cheap products. Airport was closed. But you know what our management said? Those people in Baguio can do it. And we did it. We did not use the airport in Manila. We get the C-130, fly it to Lawag, around the Pacific Ocean, through Bandar Seri Bigawan, we're shipping. We have not stopped a single day, okay? Why is it? Because of the great Filipino workers. Okay, next slide, please. And what is the result? The result was we invested more than $1 billion from 1991 up to 2000. Our productivity went up. We are hiring as many uh, people as we can, and we were growing. We put research and development. We're developing packages, products, and so on. And people from the other side were saying, can we visit your site? I told them, no. 
bullet day we will giant you. And that's because of people, integrity, innovation, and commitment. Next slide, please. So, if you remember the two buildings, we have 2,000 employees, more than 25 hectares of land, and more than 2,000, I mean, uh, more than 900 K square feet, or 8.6 hectares of clean room, invested about uh, 1.7 billion dollars of product out of this small town. Next slide, please. So, the challenge. Next slide. So in 2005, our management said, you guys in Baguio are doing great. Let's go ahead and put the factory again. But you have to follow all these requirements. No natural disasters. No more Mount Pinatubo. No more earthquake. Political stability. No more codita. Market potential. It should be as big as China. So if you look at this, except for one, which is the people, it's all against us. And everybody was going to China. This is the time when people were saying, all the road is leading to China. Okay? Chinese government were saying, we're giving you free land, we're giving you uh, free building, we're going to give you rebate, and it is something that nobody can say no. In the Philippines, we only have us. That's the only thing that makes the difference. At the end of the day, Texas and Seven says, let's do it in Clark. So, Chinese government was really mad. How can the Philippines beat us? So, believe me, even if we have small banka, we're going to beat them in Scarborough uh, Shoal. <laughs> Next slides, please. Okay. Looks like. These facilities is the first facilities in the Philippines to have a wafer fab. So all those uh, domes there that saying that you will never have a fab in the Philippines. Wrong. We have the best wafer fab in Clark. The best in terms of technology, the best in terms of cost, and the best people that support it. Next slide, please. So in uh, 2007, we have a groundbreaking, and mind this, ladies and gentlemen, a huge facility never done before was completed in 12 and a half months, not by a foreign contractors, but a small town contractor from Pampanga, he did it in 12.5 months. So we Filipino can do it. The total project with an investment of one billion was completed in 22 months. So it can be done. So the highway from, from Tarlac to uh, the port of Rosario could have been done in less than six months. Now it's been five years. So how about production? We moved the tools in 2008. That was in September. By 2009, we're producing products. And us, in the first two years of operations, we're shipping billions of units. Next slide, please. And this is how we hire people. It's, that's why, don't just consider Baguio. Clark. Only inside the factory. 
Next slide, please. And this is what we have now. For the last one, two, three, four, five years, Texas Instruments, both Baguio and Clark, and we don't have expat, except for our finance director, we don't have expat in the Philippines. It can be done by Filipinas. Next slide, please. For our architectures, oh, there's a picture there, but our factories is very unique. It's the largest construction that ever built. The first wafer fob that we built outside the USA, the first bump probe of integrated operation in one roof, and it's using a revolutionary uh, uh, power supply called Rotary UPS. So one of these days I will bring you there and you will enjoy looking at it. And because the Philippines is an uh, earthquake country, we put a roller. It's a post where the superstructure is being put in. It's, there's a roller. So when there's an earthquake, okay, our building will only dance Gangnam style. We will not even feel it. So, next slide, please. Next slide. So it's, uh, it's the first LED certified factory, gold, not done in any part of the country. We were the first LED certified. Next slide, please. So I told you all the story. We just don't work. We also enjoy. You know, that's why if you go to Texas Instrument, everybody is slim because we do a lot of activities. We do ballroom dancing, everything that you can take care of. We have all those facilities. So think about it. The first application, you know where you're going to send. And we also give back, next slide, please. Next slide. We also give back to the society. I am very proud to tell you that our employees are setting aside a certain amount of their salary, not the company, to send students to school. So as of today, our Angat Bata program has already sent close to 500 students from elementary to college being sponsored by our employees. We also do feeding program to poor school, 100%. We feed them. I'm just worried because we give them a lot of lugaw, you know, a lot of tawag uh, don, maraming maraming laman loob to make them more uh, energized. The reason why we have a big uh, fall up on elementary students because when they go to school, they have nothing. I have experienced that when I was going to school. They have nothing in their stomach. So when they go home, they don't come back to school. So we can build all the schools we want, but if the students are not fed well, we will have problems. Okay, next slide. What is the future? This one is exciting. Next slide. So we have a huge IT operations in the US. It's costing TI millions of dollars. And one day, a guy told me, the IT uh, or the, our CIO told me, you know, Bing, why don't we put uh, poor people in Baguio? Let's hire 10 people. Let's start it. I told him, what are they going to do? Oh, well, they're going to support the AI. One for one, one headcount out of Dallas, one headcount in the Philippines, if you prove it. So the poor people, and he was telling me, maximum of 20. You know how many people we have now in, in these operations? 200 and growing. It's because our people here is not only dedicated, it's also lower cost. I wish I can give you the salary of our people in dollars. Then you don't have to work so hard. They're paid in dollars. I'm paid in one. So now our operation in, in, 
in ITAs, we support global uh, environment in terms of uh, manufacturing, engineering, procurement and logistic, supply chain, data management, sales and marketing, and the talent we need are those people with Oracle, SQL, Java, SAP, mainframe, some of the oldest uh, software also, and, and, and we have that, that partners have been using. EI Philippines now is a center. All payables across the company is now done in Baguio. It reduces cost, standard process, and optimizes the operation. So, what does that mean to all of you? A question is always asked. Why don't you grow in the Philippines? Why not much investment in the Philippines? You have the best worker. So we need to improve our political will. We have, once we do that, you know, it's only for us to dream. That's the only limitation for us to grow. So again, maraming salamat. And I would like to thank all of you for, you know, have patience hearing the story. But I'm really proud to be a Filipino worker. <laughs>